Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. We will proceed with Chapter 2, Business Process Redesign Principles, Lighting the Way. So the objectives of this chapter, okay, uh, at the end of this chapter, you will be able to list and describe the seven process principles for redesign, list and explain the seven transformation principles to guide managers in their project strategy, structure and process, and identify and describe the six principles that provide guidance for continued productivity and success, which is continuous process improvement. There will be three principles that we'll look at. Okay, First is process redesign principles, second is transformation principles, and the last one is continuous process improvement principles. What does it mean by lighting the way? Eh, the, the, the principles. Why do we need these principles? All right. Um, actually, principles is to guide the organization, to guide the business process itself. Okay. Eh, uh, do we need any standards? Eh? Any standards in the organization related to business process reengineering? Eh, any guidelines and principles that we can refer to? Okay, uh, for us to uh, design the principles, uh, the, the design the uh, re-engineering, uh, any guidelines and principles for uh, transformation during the transformation process, okay, um, any standards, any guidelines, principles for continuous process improvement. All right. So, uh, most of the time. Okay, uh, these standards, these guidelines and principles are used by the team members okay, to, uh, to design, all right? to design the process, the structure, okay, the, the technical processes, all right? for them to design the different managerial compensation and performance measurement systems, okay, for, for them to focus their transformation efforts on business culture, okay, the values and belief systems. Okay, if you still remember the three layers uh, that we have learned earlier eh, with nine dimensions. All right? um, some, eh, they may be need this principle, this uh, standard, the guidelines eh, for uh, coming out with new techniques. All right, or advanced computer technologies okay, for, for the business change, for the radical change. All right? So for re-engineering change to be successful, okay, three questions must be answered. Okay, how do we develop effective re-engineering designs? Okay, so this refers to the, re, uh, the process redesign principles, the seven process redesign principles. Second question, how can we ensure a successful implementation? This is uh, referring to the seven transformation principles. Okay, so so uh, how, how do we ensure uh, the successful implementation? So there are a few things that we need to look at. And then the third question is how can we ensure continued application, productivity and effectiveness after the re-engineering? So this one yeah, is referring to the six continuing, uh, cost, continuous process improvement principles. So these questions can be answered through three sets of interlocking principles. Yeah, this uh, interlocking, uh, these three principles just now. Okay. So um, next, uh, uh, we'll take a look at each of these principles yeah, in detail. Okay, what are the seven process redesign principles? What are the seven transformation principles? And what are the six continuous process improvement principles? Let us take a look at the first principle, which is process redesign principles. There are seven process redesign principles. Okay, first is organized work around outcomes. Second, provide direct access to customers. Third, harness technology. 
Fourth, control through policies, practices and feedback. Fifth, enable interdependent and simultaneous work. Sixth, give decision-making power to workers. And finally, built-in feedback channels. So the first uh, principle for process redesign is organize work around outcomes. So what is the goal of this organizing work around outcomes? Okay, there are uh, actually two important goals for this uh, work, uh, organized work around outcome. First is we want to significantly reduce the cycle times. And second, we want to significantly improve uh, the uh, responsiveness. Okay, so what does it mean? Okay, um, what what does it mean by reducing cycle times and improves the responsiveness? Okay, rather than focus uh, focusing on individual tasks, okay? we want to focus on uh, on the outcomes, on the goals of the business reengineering. Okay. Uh, example given in the textbook and we want to focus on it is a, a claim a claim process so we want to focus on that processed claim all right that is the the outcomes eh? rather than uh, we are focusing on the individual tasks verifying the claim information and um, uh, approval process for example so we want to uh, to organize the work around the outcomes the process claim so that we know uh, what is actually that we want eh? what we want to complete what is the goal of that particular business reengineering okay yeah, so it will enable the people to measure the direct impact eh, of their work on the organization all right so people will get view of what to do how to do when to do okay yeah, who will involve in that particular process all right it provides the managers with the mean to hold individuals and team teams accountable so everyone knows uh, uh, on their own task eh? they know what to do all right what to do next all right okay? and then it means that the business process are grouped together okay, to eliminate the need for hands-off and excessive checking so we will eliminate those unnecessary uh, steps all right yeah, so the jobs will become vertically loaded in which people can act in, on information that they generate themselves. Yeah, so this is very important. We need to organize our work around outcomes in which we, we need to know actually what, what are the goals of that particular re-engineering, what we want to achieve. So that we will uh, uh, on the right track, we will be on the right track. We will know what to do, who are responsible for this task, that task, okay, when to do it, and so on and so forth. Okay, that is organizing work around outcomes. Second process redesign principles is provide direct access to customers. Okay, so uh, this second principle is as a measure for us to redesign the processes for the quality and effectiveness of the uh, products okay, uh, to be delivered to customers. All right? uh, what is the right products uh, based on their needs? When will be uh, the right time for us to deliver the products or services to the customers? So this second principle uh, can serve eh, both as a guide uh, to redesign the work or to measure the redesign processes. So the work groups, yeah, the team members can be held accountable yeah, for their behavior and yeah, for their behavior to deliver a quality product services to the customer. All right. So this direct access to customers will allow for timely and accurate responses to customer inquiries, to customer needs, to customer wants. Okay, so it will eliminate the common mismatch between customer expectations and the product or service development. So we don't want the mismatch between the expectation of the customer and the development of the product or service. So that we can provide the quality, a good uh, of good quality of high quality products or services or after sales service to the customer. All right. So uh, the people, 
uh, in the organization, the team members will have the authority to establish and maintain customer relationships without intermediary, uh, intermediaries. So let's say the sales uh, person will, will have a, a direct relationship Okay, with the customer and they can or they, 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 they can establish or they can maintain the relationship, the good relationship uh, with the customers without um, uh, any intermediaries, all right? uh, without going through the managers, for example, because you are the one who, who deal directly with the customers. So uh, the, the information could be um, more accurate. And then if let's say it 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 needs to be uh, uh, to go through the the managers okay so the employees the team members and eh, the sales salesperson eh, they will work cross functionally and cross organizationally with peer and up and down the hierarchy so it is very important okay for for um, the redesign process okay uh, the of uh, providing direct access to customers so that uh, we will uh, uh, the 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 responses to the customer will be accurate and uh, in a timely manner all right to the uh, to to fulfill the customer inquiries to fulfill the customer needs and wants the third process redesign principle is harness technology it means the technology that can uh, we can use, eh, the, that we can uh, fully utilize, that uh, we can make use of that technology uh, for our business re-engineering that will support uh, the business re-engineering at the optimal um, stage. All right. Okay, so the technology that can provide universal access to information that will allow people to work independently, okay, um, uh, no matter where they are, yeah, uh, what is, uh, uh, when uh, will they need to use that particular technology. Right? Harnessing technology means providing access to the right information at the right time. Okay, so if let's say uh, the uh, office is at Puncha Alam, but now uh, we need to work from home, so we can access the system uh, from Shah Alam, from Bangi, from Negeri Sembilan, from Malacca, for example. Okay, for those uh, uh, whose their hometown is in Negeri Sembilan, for example, and they need to travel uh, daily from Negeri Sembilan to Punca Alam, but now because of work, uh, we are working from home, so the technology can be accessed from home. All right, so it can be accessed anytime, okay, uh, during midnight, eh, daytime, during daytime, and so on. Okay, so that is called harness technology, and uh, the technology should uh, anticipate. All right, the uh, uh, the business re engineers uh, must be able to anticipate information. All right, need and answer the question: Where does technology provide the most return on investment? On investment while still allowing flexibility for future changes so that technology should uh, should be uh, flexible eh? so that uh, let's say in 10 years time it still can be used all right it is not only for short term all right you ne we need to to use the technology that can help us to do things for a long term yeah, so that it will be cost effective all right so that is called harness technology the technology yeah, that uh, will provide access uh, for the employees yeah, um, the, uh, at the right time yeah, um, and uh, anywhere all right uh, within that right information the fourth process redesign principle is control through policies practices and feedback so we need these policies these principles these guidelines this standard to monitor the um, 
processes to monitor the cycles, to monitor the um, any problems, to monitor the barriers to communication with customers, to monitor the inventory, to monitor the um, feedback of managers, eh, feedback to managers, eh, to monitor the satisfaction of the customers, right? So we need to uh, the uh, control through pol uh, we need these guidelines, all right? Uh, these policies, these practices, this feedback, uh, in order for us to uh, to have a good process uh, uh, business reengineering, all right? So usually, yeah, I will use uh, a well documented policies, guidelines, procedures, standards, the practices on which yeah, to base the decision making. So uh, if uh, we need to do this decision all right so we will refer to that particular policies or the practices that has been outlined in uh, any uh, policies in any procedures that has been outlined by the company okay followed by the uh, by training all right in applying those policies and practices okay? and a solid feedback process that identifies errors and potential problems so most of the time okay we will we'll refer to the let's say uh, to the senior staff uh, to the um, to our colleagues or to the policies and practices that has been outlined by the company uh, to solve the problem okay and then yeah, uh, um, sometimes in the company not sometimes and most of the company they will have this um, audit all right uh, audit uh, that will randomly checks compliance with the policy and practices. Eh? For example, eh, uh, as a lecturer eh, who, who's teaching uh, the code or few codes, eh, we need to um, uh, prepare a course file, eh, the teaching file. Course file is uh, prepared by the resource person for that particular code. And teaching file will be uh, prepared by uh, every every lecturer who, who's teaching the code all right so uh, in order for the um, company for UIT and for the faculty to know whether we comply with those uh, practices here yeah, they will conduct uh, an audit session yeah, to check all right to randomly check whether we comply with those practices Okay, why? Eh? Because we need to uh, prepare. Uh, why, 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 what is the need of preparing this document? Okay, it is to ensure that we are following the um, standards of teaching. All right, we are following the uh, the syllabus okay? uh, in teaching. All right, so we need this control through the policies, practices, and feedback. If let's say we we do not comply, we did not comply with the uh, practices. Okay, this audit committee they will uh, submit a report to the top management, and then the top management will take action yeah, to these lecturers who did not prepare or uh, who did not complete the course file or teaching file. Yeah, because uh, this we want to make sure that everyone are using the same syllabus everyone um, deliver what they need to deliver the student can perform or cannot perform we need to audit okay we need to audit why these students cannot perform why that student perform very well yeah, is it uh, um, uh, is there any problem with the syllabus? Is there any problem with the teaching methodology? Or is there any problem with the students themselves? All right. So we need to have this control to the, uh, through the policies, practices and feedback. So this is the fourth principle that we need to have in this um, process redesign principles. The yes, same goes to the example given over here okay, in the textbook. Um, it's on the satisfied customer. Okay, this, the customer returns a defective product that is now out of stock. All right, an available product would please the customer. So you will replace uh, the defective product with the current product okay, that we have, the available product that we have. 
Okay, because that defective product is now out of stock. And then the product is the same, is in the same price range. Okay, and then the discounted price for the replacement product is not lower than the price paid for the original. So you will make this customer satisfy. Okay, uh, same goes to me f uh, last week. Eh, I've received a product that I purchased on Shopee. Okay, one of the item uh, got defect. Okay, um, so uh, I contacted the um, uh, uh, the seller, right? And then the seller asked me to click on um, refund and return. So I need to return the product to the um, seller in order for me to get the refunded amount of money. Okay, so uh, it is a very easy uh, process. Okay, refund and return, eh, returning the products in which it satisfy me and uh, it leads to uh, customer loyalty, customer retention. Eh, uh, I have the intention to purchase uh, from that particular seller uh, in the future eh, because of that uh, uh, satisfaction. Uh, satisfaction. All right. So we need eh, maybe the seller, the company, they have that uh, policies, the practices, all right, um, to return the product, uh, to to refund eh, uh, uh, of any um, defect product. Okay. So yeah, that is uh, for the fourth uh, process redesign principle. Principle number five is enabling interdependent and simultaneous work. You know, when people have access to information, when they have access to uh, the information at the right time, okay, they can communicate uh, cross-functionally and cross-organizationally. And then the work can be performed simultaneously instead of linearly. Okay, if you provide a harness technology to the employees, Okay, uh, provide the harness technology to the customer inside and outside the organization. Well, uh, if you provide direct access to the customers. So the work can be performed simultaneously instead of linearly. They can work in teams. All right. Uh, if you uh, enforce on uh, team work, right? So they can work in teams with this harness technology, with the pro, um, with the direct access to the customers. Okay? They are, yeah, the teams are being uh, responsible. Okay? They are being accountable and rewarded for the final outcome. Okay? So you give them uh, responsibility, the decision making. Okay? You, give, uh, you empower them, uh, decision making, uh, decision making. All right, and then um, with this uh, harness technology, with this uh, direct access to customers, uh, with a good uh, policies, procedures, and feedback, yeah, okay, uh, they they can work in a team, and uh, uh, at the end they will be uh, rewarded uh, for uh, the outcomes that they have achieved. Okay, yeah, they will only be rewarded if uh, they achieve the objectives and uh, the goals. The sixth process redesign principle is give decision-making power to workers. You empower the workers to make decision, to make the final decision, to make the uh, milestone decision, eh, any of the milestone decision, for example. Right? So through the access to accurate information that we gain through the harness technology eh, that we have imposed uh, and a clear understanding of policies, practices and the feedback, yeah, through the guidelines, the standard, the policies, the practices that we have earlier, yeah, uh, through a direct access to the customers, it will empower the the employees in the organization to make inform uh, a good decision, a competent decision. All right, uh, because uh, uh, they can uh, act quickly, yeah, they can do the task very quickly, they can complete the task. Uh, uh, during the uh, the time given, all right, within the time given, yeah, uh, because of what? Yeah, they 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 don't have to bound to any uh, clumsy approval processes anymore. They don't need to to deal with uh, those uh, outdated bureaucracies. Yeah, they can respond to the customers' needs. 
eh, the customers wants as the 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 issues uh, arise all right okay, so uh, they don't have to go through that every levels to make decision okay we need to refer to each of the levels eh, previously okay if using the traditional uh, method uh, in the traditional environment but within this new environment eh, the business re-engineering uh, when business re-engineering uh, take place all right uh, the need for for that control eh, uh, because of, of of that review of that supervision of that approval disappear Okay, because you you have give them decision making power, all right. So new organ, organizational roles and processes can be can be added, all right. Okay, the role of the management she from supervisor to coach, okay? because of this uh, uh, empowerment, yeah? from boss to facilitator only, yeah? from the tactician to the strategist, all right. And the manager can now become a futurist, become a planner, become a subject matter expert, eh? only the facilitator, the coach, the advisor, the coordinator, eh? because of the empowerment. All right. So that is on the sixth um, process redesign principle. The last process redesign principle is built in channels. Okay. So, um, all businesses, yeah, all business owners, they they should, yeah, uh, sh they should um, build these feedback channels, yeah, so that they know how well they are meeting their uh, goals, their expectations, their um, vision, mission, yeah, the goals of that particular reengineering. Okay, so the measurement, the assessment, the change capabilities need to be designed into the processes itself okay so that eh, they can monitor eh, the feedback they can monitor the progress of that particular re-engineering okay? Um, okay so this is actually the only uh, logical way uh, to avoid problems eh? uh, you have to add the measurement assessment and change capability eh, as part of the process itself eh? so it will be monitored from time to time you'll get feedback from time to time eh? for example uh, on earlier points uh, in which we have a direct access to customer okay eh? uh, and then uh, you are given the uh, decision making power so it will lead to um, the employees okay eh? involved directly to the customers okay and you will get feedback directly from the customers not uh, indirectly through managers that uh, may lead to uh, incorrect information okay so we need to build in this feedback channel right for example if let's say a uh, 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 a client uh, a customer they send car for uh, a service all right service and then uh, you promise the um, uh, the customer to uh, complete the service by let's say uh, 4 p.m. today or uh, it will be tomorrow at 10 a.m. okay so if let's say something happened in the middle of the process itself you can directly contact the customer okay uh, so that uh, they will know uh, that the car will not be ready on time as scheduled eh, as promised eh? so you you will increase the uh, satisfaction level not because of the uh, rescheduled time but because of you are giving them information you update them on uh, on the information all right you may uh, counter counter it back eh? uh, as the schedule promise the prompt schedule is uh, at let's say 4 p.m today but you can't make it today uh, because of certain issues eh? maybe there's uh, something need to be done um, so it will be tomorrow so you may promise let's say a 10 percent discount eh? based on the uh, procedures eh? the uh, of the organization okay so that's for uh, the last um, principle for uh, process redesign.